feel like the Lord wants me to share with you is called So Run. <laughs> so we're going to turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. If you could stand for the reading of the word, if you're not already. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. When you have it, say amen. I still hear pages turning, so I'll wait a few more minutes. <laughs> the Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy who for the joy who was set that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you today, God. We ask God that you would speak through your word tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus, that our ears and our hearts would be open, God, and receptive to your word. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about running a race and about the qualities of a runner. Is there, do we have any runners in the building tonight? <laughs> I know Sister MJ, she's not here tonight because she had to go to her nephew's graduation, but I know she just finished, I think, a half marathon a few weeks ago. <laughs> so she's not here to help me, but that's okay. <laughs> Sister Paula can, can fill in. Um, so we're going to talk about running a race. And there's some qualities that runners have to have in order to be successful. And we're going to talk about some of those. They are endurance, desire, preparation, discipline, and obedience. So the first one we're going to talk about is endurance. And endurance simply means the ability for a human or animal to exert it itself and remain active for a long period of time, as well as its ability to resist, withstand, Recover from and have immunity to trauma, wounds, or fatigue. That's from wikipedia.com, <laughs> in case you wanted to know. <laughs> um, so being able to endure means being able to exert energy and to be able to sustain yourself for a long period of time. Um, let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So if we are able to finish our course, we're going to have a crown of righteousness, which... In most races, there's only one winner. But in this race, there's going to be multiple winners. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And I hope it's going to be you. <laughs> and I hope it's going to be me. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Acts chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. We're just going to talk a little bit about endurance. Acts chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So it doesn't say that just because we're running the race, it's going to be easy. In fact, it says there's going to be tribulation. And our test is to make sure 
that we are able to trust in the Lord. The verse that we read a few minutes ago in Hebrews said, we have to look to Jesus when those things come. And our test is to see if we can continue to run even though these obstacles come in our way. Hallelujah. This verse says that we might enter into the kingdom of God. And let's turn to Revelation chapter 3 verse 11. And that verse simply says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So this verse says, I'm going to be coming quickly, so don't let go of what you have. Don't let go of your salvation. Even though these trials come, don't let go of it. That no man would take thy crown. Because we read before that if we continue, if we fight the good fight, we're going to get a crown. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I know I have a lot of scriptures, but <laughs> should go pretty quick. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. And this is Paul speaking again. And he said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We got to keep pressing. Praise God. We got to keep pressing on. Hallelujah. Um, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. And it says, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So it doesn't matter if these troubles come and we get distracted a little bit and we fall. What matters is whether we get up or not. If we don't get up, then we can't finish the race. When these runners are running and they fall, they get so tired, their body just, just falls. If they don't get up, then they don't finish the race. It's the same with us. If we have things that come into our lives and, and we don't look to Jesus like the verse said and we don't get help and we try to do it on our own and we fall, and if we don't look unto him and get up and brush ourselves off and keep going, then we're not going to get the crown. And I know I, I want to make a determination in my heart that I want to make it. I've come this far. I don't want to lose now. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's turn to Matthew 24, verse 13. Matthew 24, 13. And that verse says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. If we keep on, if we endure until the end, the Bible says we're going to be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next thing that we're going to talk about that runners have to have is desire. And desire, according to the dictionary, is to wish or long for, to crave or want. How bad do you want to see Jesus? How bad do you want to stand before his throne? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Psalms 37, verse 4. Let's turn there real quickly. Psalms 37, verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Who do we have to de delight ourselves in? Yes, and he's going to give us those desires. If we desire bad enough to seek him, he's going to show us in his word what we need to do to make it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the next thing that runners need in order to succeed is preparation. Runners cannot just say, I can't, me, myself, I've never been a runner, never could be. <laughs> um, but say I decided, 
I'm going to run a marathon. And I just go to Boston. Boston's a pretty famous marathon. I go to the Boston Marathon and I sign up. And I don't do anything to prepare myself. How far do you think I'm going to make it? Probably not to the, to the next block. <laughs> I probably end up with a runner's cramp. <laughs> That's what usually happens to me. Um, but preparation is the action of making ready or being ready, being made ready for use. It's also something done to get ready for an event or undertaking. What are we doing to prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus? What are we doing to meet him? to make sure that we meet him. Praise God. Let's um, look at some ways that we need to be prepared. The first one is we have to be prepared mentally. I know there's things that um, I've tried to do. And if I don't prepare myself mentally, if I don't tell myself, you can do this, you can do it, then sometimes I get so nervous and I just, I can't do it. But if I tell myself, you can do it, then you can. And let's turn to 1 Peter 1, verse 13. First Peter 1, verse 13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And um, in the NIV version, it says, instead of wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, it says, prepare your minds for action. Get your mind ready to tell yourself you can make it. You can finish the race. You can keep on the course. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let's turn there real quick. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that's something that I always pray. I always pray that the Lord would just help me to have his mind because our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And so we need to get our minds thinking like the Lord would think and ask ourselves, is that something that the Lord would want me to do? Is that something that God would want, want us to participate in? And if the answer is no, then you might want to think about it. <laughs> um, also, runners have to prepare their bodies by eating the right foods. And I did a little research. <laughs> and runners, it says when you're getting ready to run a marathon, you got to make sure you eat your carbs. Amen? Oh, so I just said it right there. You got to eat your carbs because that's going to give you the energy that you need to finish the race. You want, you're probably saying, how can we apply that to the spirit? You have to prepare yourself by eating his word. Jeremiah verse 15, chapter 15, verse 16. Let's turn there and see what it says. Jeremiah 15, 16. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. He said, Your words were found, and I ate them. And they were unto me joy. And it's so important that we need to be eating the word of God on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because if we don't, we're going to be weak. And when, when those things come in our way, we are going to fall. And if we are eating the word of God, we're going to have that power that we need, that energy that we need to keep going, to finish the race. Amen? Hallelujah. The next thing that we need, that a runner needs, I should say, 
is to stay hydrated. Huh? <laughs> you got to drink water. Let's turn to John chapter 7, verse 37 and 39, to 39. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. It says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst... Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus said, If any man thirst, come unto me, and I will give you drink. And out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. And at that time, he was not yet ascended, so the spirit couldn't come. But for us, we can have that spirit anytime. We need to stay hydrated with the spirit of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And in Acts, I didn't put this in my notes, but in Acts chapter 1, it says that when we receive the Holy Ghost, it gives us power that we will be witnesses for him. Hallelujah. How many of you want that power tonight to be able to be a witness for God? Hallelujah. Praise God. Also, a runner has to have the correct clothing. Maya? Whoops. Let's put a shirt on first. If you tried to go running in your high heels and your long dress and how far do you think you'd get? <laughs> I know I could barely run around the church with these heels on. You got to put the right stuff on. Here, hold on one second. <laughs> You got to put the right clothes on and you need your <laughs> you need your hat to protect you from the sun. You need your running clothes, you need your tennis shoes, your running shoes. And let's turn to Romans 13 verse 14. Romans 13, 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the NIV it says, Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. We got to make sure that we are full of him. And how can we be full of him? By staying full of his spirit being full of his word, knowing the word. Um, and another thing is, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. This is going to prepare us for the race. Verse 11 of Ephesians chapter 6 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then... If you go down to verse 13, it says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the e in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. We got to have truth. We got to have the breastplate of righteousness. We got to have our feet shod with the 
preparation of the gospel of peace. We've got to have the shield of faith. And we need the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen? When we put on this to protect our, us from the sun, we put on salvation. Stand up. We put on our breastplate of righteousness. Loins girt about with truth. And we put on um, our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If we just look into the word, it will tell us what we need to be ready for the race. Hallelujah. Okay, you can go sit down. You can take it off if you want to. Just go over there. Hallelujah. The next thing that we need to, in order to be able to finish the race is discipline. And discipline is activity, exercise, or regimen that develops or improves a skill. Training. We need training. We need a regimen of Bible reading and prayer. And we need a regimen of coming to church faithfully. We need a regimen of, of just witnessing for him, of doing what he, the word says. We need that kind of regimen in our lives. Let's turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. And it says, If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So we need to continue in the faith. We can't just give up because it's too hard. We got to be disciplined. We got to keep going. Even though it hurts. Even though our muscles are burning. Our legs are burning. We got to keep pushing through. Hallelujah. Praise God. We need to be grounded and settled in our faith. Let's just turn over um, Colossians, the next chapter, chapter 2. And let's look at verse 7. It also says, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. In this church, you will be taught well. My husband, he goes strictly by this right here. He doesn't make up his own stuff as he goes along. He goes by what's in the word of God. And because of that, um, you are going to be rooted and grounded in your faith, established in your faith, because your foundation is built on this and not just some man's ideas. Praise God. Hallelujah. The next thing we need to have is obedience. And this can be a hard one. But in order to compete, a contestant must abide by the rules of the competition or else they're not allowed to compete. And what happens if they break one of the rules? They're disqualified. And they, they're like, go home. You can't, you can't do it. You can't compete. And it's the same with this race that we're running. There's some rules that we have to abide by in order to make it to heaven. Let's turn to John 3. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if we want to make it to the kingdom, if we want to finish the race, we have to do what this word says. And it says we have to be born of the water, which is what? 
baptism. We have to be born of the Spirit, which is what? The Holy Ghost. We have to do those things. If we don't, it says we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's pretty serious. Let's turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Everyone should know this one by heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we know if we, if we read previous to this verse, that those that were, had crucified Jesus, they heard Peter preaching, and they, it says they were pricked in their hearts. And they said, what are we, get, what can we do? They felt so bad, they didn't know what to do. And that's when Peter told them, you gotta repent. You gotta be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, which means washes it away. And you're going to get the Holy Ghost. You're going to get that gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Praise God. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. And we're almost done. I know it's a lot of scripture, but I like to go by the word of God. <laughs> Man, Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. And here he says, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And here we see Paul is talking to the Galatians, and he told them, he gave them a compliment. He said, You ran well. But then he asked him a question. Who hindered you that you shouldn't obey the truth? And in this verse, it doesn't give the answer. But then he says, they must have said something. Because then he said, this persuasion, whoever's persuading you to do what is not truth, comes not of him that calleth you. So we need to be careful that we don't let people in our lives that are going to Turn us away from the truth of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then it says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What it's saying is, if you let one mistruth, one untruth, whatever, I don't know what the wording is, but something that's not true into your life, if you just let one thing in, if you just let a little bit in, it's going to make the whole thing corrupt. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. If you get a little leaven in there, it's going to make the whole thing leavened. And if we're not willing to do what the Bible says is necessary to be saved, then we're not obeying the word of God. We have to have obedience to the word of God in order to finish the race. And then in conclusion, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 24 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses, starting at verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we and incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So Paul here is saying again, um, he's talking about some races that were happening in in Corinth at the time, and they were called the Isthmian Games. And they were similar to um, the Olympics, but they were on different years than the Olympics. And, but he used it as an example because it was something they could relate to. And Paul told them, 
so run that ye may obtain. And that's what I want to tell you tonight. Run that ye may obtain, that ye may make it, that you might make it to heaven, that you might make heaven your home tonight. Praise God. We need to determine in ourselves by examining our lives and seeing which qualities that we need to work on. Do we need to work on being prepared? Do we need to work on obedience? It could be more than one thing. And, but when we do it, we need to remember that when we run the race, we don't have to do it ourselves. We can look unto Jesus. And when it feels like we can't take another step, we need to look unto him and ask him to help us go on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's all stand. Praise the Lord. Why don't we give God one more hand clap of praise in this house. You can be seated. Now it's my turn. Praise God. I only need another 40 minutes. And we... Just kidding. I'm just kidding. You can stand up. <laughs> We're going to make it like the Catholic Church. You can stand up. You can stand. Y'all thought I was going to preach, huh? Oh, nobody complained. That's good. Praise the Lord. I just want to apologize. Uh, Brother Joe Paul reminded me when we pulled up that Sunday, I told you, don't miss Wednesday, man. I've got something for you. Uh, but I got a phone call <laughs> to preach at Mark Lilly's church. And so um, you'll have to wait till Sunday. So all of you that are here, uh, I want to thank you for your attendance and for your faithfulness. It's not, look around. It looks nice to see the church that's full, doesn't it? Somebody clap on to the Lord. God is good. God is awesome. I want to give you another praise report. We had, uh, and we're going to have an opportunity to pray in a minute because I believe uh, that my wife taught something very valuable about running uh, so that we can obtain and acquire God. So we're going to give you a chance to do that up here in a second. But I want to give you a praise report before we go any further. Uh, we taught a Bible study yesterday. Uh, Tuesdays have been the days, huh? You did? How are you going to tell my stuff, girl? Is anybody excited about the fact that we've had two weeks that we're doing Bible studies and people are getting baptized right after? Mm, that was my story, girl. That's all right, though, because she had my back. How did she do? Did she do all right? Did she give you the word of God? Did she give you the word as it's laid out? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Babe, I'm going to ask you to play. I want to give the opportunity to, church to come down. Uh, to, to, listen, any time we come into the house of the Lord, you, did, you had her preaching, so it wasn't too long. Uh, this Sunday, I'm really going to do my best to, to get that concept that I'm trying to get out within like 30 minutes because I want us to spend some time in the altar on Sunday. I want us to be tearing unto the Lord. To Listen, if, you know how when we pray and, and the longer we go, something begins to happen in the spirit and God begins to pour out. I want that to happen in our altar call this Sunday. I want us to just be prepared. I know I've been preaching long. I've got a lot to say. I've got a lot of stuff that I think the church needs. Uh, but I've got a concept that I just want to bring out to the church on Sunday. I'm going to do my best to get it done like 30 minutes so that we can, I'm, I'm only going to have maybe two slides. Don't want you laugh at me, girl. She said, he can't do it. I bet you I can. Come on now, I got something for you. It's going to be amazing. Uh, praise the Lord. Sister, what is your husband's name again? Sister uh, Roberta? Huh? Wallace. It's so good to see you in this house. Can we just say hello to Wallace? I'm so glad you came today. Praise God. I came in. I said, is that my brother? What's up? All right. Praise the Lord. So Sunday we are going to have an amazing time. If you are ready to go, if you feel like you need to leave, uh, I am going to open up the altars for prayer. I know some of us just got back from church and, and, and we didn't have, but we just had pretty much a Bible study. And so I know some of us are looking to be in the presence of God. Uh, but I want to give you an opportunity to make some commitments onto the Lord to run that race. To run it the way that my wife preached it. I didn't get all of it, but what I heard was good. Uh, you can come down right now and pray.
you know, those are all the people that came willingly. Now the rest, I'm going to threaten you. <laughs> I know there's more people that need more prayer than what's out in this altar right now. I know that there's more people out there that got things going on in their life that you need God to minister to. So if I need to remind you of that, I'm not afraid to encourage you to come down to this place. You can feel the Holy Ghost where you're at, but there's something different that happens when you come to God, when you approach God, when you run to God. In Jesus' name.
praying. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I walked into a Holy Ghost house. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Woo! Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm a little casual today. I was preaching at Mark's church. I figured he'd appreciate that. I don't think I've ever wore jeans when I'm on the platform. But I guess this is the first time for everything. I want to go ahead and stand. Raise our hands. Holy hands without wrath and downing. Praying unto the Lord for the congregation. Jesus, we thank you. We're so honored and blessed to be in your house. We need to reverence the idea of our freedom and liberty to be in your place. To be in your house. To be in your spirit. Let us receive this word. Let us take it home with us. Let us eat this nourishment that's going to give us strength and power, endurance and courage to walk the walk of God. And let us come back ready on Sunday to have worship that we haven't had before. Worship that's going to inhabit this whole place that will bring the Shekinah glory into this house. We're going to have church. On Sunday, don't miss it. Bring a friend. Bring several. Let us get home safe and bring us back to the house of God safe on Sunday. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. Praise God. Clap onto the Lord like you love him. Amen. You are dismissed. Don't forget, we're going to have a quick meeting for fundraising. So just come towards the front and we'll just have a quick meeting there.